Good morning. My name is uh, Kevin. I'm a consultant paediatrician and I work with the cystic fibrosis team in Liverpool. I've been asked by the CF Trust to record this video uh, to talk a bit about COVID-19 and, and to, um, to answer some of the questions that have been coming through to the Trust on a regular basis and, and, and to CF teams as well. Uh, first to say, I mean, we could, uh, this, this is uh, uh, a situation that, that, that's causing uh, much anxiety for, for the whole uh, population. Um, but for people with CF it's particularly, and their families, it's, it's particularly worrying um, and we appreciate that. Um, COVID-19 is, is, is a new strain of the coronavirus, the coronavirus we're very familiar with. Ordinarily the coronavirus cause, causes a cold and I'm just recovering from a cold, that could have been coronavirus. Um, and it's a very mild illness. Um, more recently there's been some uh, uh, variants of the coronavirus that have caused more serious uh, respiratory conditions and you will be familiar with those so those were called SARS and, and MERS and, 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 and those outbreaks of infection with those vi that those virus were contained um, over time but the COVID-19 virus is, is somewhere between those two um, types of virus. It, it, it's um, a much milder uh, form of, of, of infection uh, than SARS and MERS, but, but, but has been associated in some cases in, in uh, a very small number of people with a very significant uh, respiratory infection. Um, and, and so that's kind of given it the characteristics to make it um, a virus that's able to spread more successfully because for the vast majority of uh, people infected with COVID-19 it, it will be a, a fairly mild illness and, it, and actually in a, in a few people it will be asymptomatic uh, and that's enabled it to spread across China and then more recently a, a across the globe. So uh, obviously with this uh, emerging um, issue there, there's concern uh, publicly, but but for people with CF, it's it's particularly uh, concerning um, with regard to the impact that it might have on somebody who has an a, an underlying potential to have uh, chest infection. So some of the questions that we've received from people, uh, I, I will answer now. And there are there, there 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 is some information on the CF Trust website, and also um, obviously if you have any further concerns, please do contact your CF teams uh, either by email or, or or by phone. One of the questions that we've been asked uh, regularly is around the wearing of masks, um, and and the information has been a bit confusing and so some countries have have um, uh, recommended that people wear masks all the time but that has not been the recommendation in in Europe or in in the UK um, and the reason for that is that there's no good evidence that wearing a mask will protect you from developing the COVID-19 uh, acquiring the COVID-19 infection um, the most common uh, way of acquiring the infection is, is, is through your hands and through a touch and contact with uh, door handles and cups and so forth and then uh, touching your face and your eyes and this is why the government has so strongly recommended around hand washing and why hand washing is so important uh, rigorous hand washing for more than 20 seconds um, and with soap and water or with alcohol if, if that's available to you that said, there is um, some evidence that, that wearing a mask um, may protect others if you have the virus. So if, if you have cold symptoms, a runny nose, or if you have a cough, an increasing cough, and you are going to hospital uh, to see uh, your CF team or other healthcare professionals, it may be reasonable to wear a mask um, because that might be uh, providing some protection to others. And healthcare professionals are, through their job uh, exposed to 
potentially to, to, to a large number of people with, uh, with respiratory viruses. So, so that might be a reasonable thing to do if you, if you are visiting the hospital. Um, another question that we're asked is around, should we self-isolate now? Should we kind of avoid contact and, 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 and maybe come out of school or, or take time off work? Um, at the moment, there is absolutely no evidence to, to support people with cystic fibrosis who are well from, from moving away from the, the, the national guidance. So, and, and it's important to follow the national guidance. It's important also that, that children are not um, uh, taken out of school unnecessarily and, 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 and miss out on their learning opportunities. And it's important that people uh, don't compromise uh, themselves with regard to their employment unnecessarily. Again, that said, uh, government advice may change over time and, and we and you should keep uh, a good eye out for that. At the moment, the government is in a containment phase and the containment phase is, is very important. Even if the virus is spreading, by, by having a, a, a containment attitude, it, it keeps the spread limited. And as we move into the summer, that may become important. Um, at some point, though, the government may... Uh, develop more of a mitigation phase which is where they're just controlling the impact of, 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 of the, the spread of the virus on, on, on the general population. At that point they may turn around and say that, that we, we would like schools to be closed for a couple of weeks because that's, there's very good evidence that doing that uh, strategically could, can halt or, or delay the, the, the spread of a, of a viral infection. Uh, so that's possible, and we'll, we'll keep a, a lookout for that over time. But at the moment, for people with cystic fibrosis, adults and children who are well, following the national guidance is, is, is uh, completely fine. And if you're planning to travel, that's also fine if you're travelling to a, an area that, that, that isn't currently affected by the COVID-19 virus. Um, <clears throat> people have asked around what's been the progress with regard to uh, new, new treatments and uh, treatments for the COVID-19 infection. And um, there's a lot of research that's now being funding, funded and is being done very quickly across the globe. Um, there are no direct antiviral agents against COVID-19 that have been um, identified for clinical practice at the moment, but there are a couple of agents that look as if they may have some promise and, and research is going on in a number of parts of the world. If they become available, obviously, then people with cystic fibrosis would be a population who, who we would be keen to support using those viruses. A bit like Tamiflu for when there was the um, uh, influenza um, uh, spread uh, a few years ago. Um, but Tamiflu has, has no uh, impact on the coronavirus, so, so that wouldn't be an appropriate agent. But we're looking out for other options. And with regard to the vaccination, um, it's, there, again, there's a tremendous amount of work being done across the globe on trying to, to develop a vaccine against COVID-19. And it, it's possible that th this will emerge, but, but unlikely that it will uh, be of impact over the course of the next six months or so. Um, but, but that may be important for the future because the, the, the nature of viruses is that they often have a seasonality and it's possible that COVID-19 will, will similarly maybe have a lower uh, rate of infection during the summer months and then, and, and then begin to go up again next winter. So if a, vir if, if a vaccination is available before next winter, that would be very important. And, and again, obviously people with cystic fibrosis will be on the front line of, of that should it become available. It's important to say that um, people have talked about comparing COVID-19 to um, influenza and, and, and that's a valid uh, comparison really. Uh, in that um, uh, it has a similar sort of profile of, of, of many people that get flu will have a mild illness, but some can be really quite significantly affected by the flu. Um, uh, but we have a flu vaccine available and uh, all CF teams recommend to all their patients that, that they have an annual flu vaccination and, and we would strongly uh, reinforce that. And if you 
if you haven't had the flu vaccination as yet, um, it, it, it's still well worth having a chat with your GP and making sure that you get the flu vaccination. Although it gives you no protection against COVID-19, it's well recognised that, that dual infection can occur with viruses. So if you have infection with one virus, for example, flu, it may predispose you to having uh, an infection with another virus, possibly COVID-19, and, and that could potentially sometimes be more severe. So, so make sure you've got the flu vaccine. Make sure you're really looking after yourself, paying attention to your nutrition, your airway clearance and all the treatments that you take on a daily basis. Really try and keep yourself in as good a shape as possible going into these uh, spring months. People have asked um, about whether there's any uh, particular forms or treatments that, that, that could predispose uh, people with cystic fibrosis to the COVID-19 infection. And certainly uh, patients who have more established airways infection um, and maybe have daily treatments and possibly intermittent need for hospital treatment, um, it would be reasonable to talk to your CF team about how you are and, and, and sort of make plans on that regard. Um, some patients are on steroids for various reasons and sometimes they can be quite high dose steroids and in, 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 in those cases again it's worth uh, discussing that with your CF team. It shouldn't ordinarily um, predispose you to uh, an increased risk of getting the COVID-19 but, but, but again it's, it's, it's something that you need to be aware of and, 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 and um, have um, some plan for dealing with that should it happen. And finally, some patients, uh, uh, older patients who may have had uh, transplantation for severe lung involvement and obviously that, that, that they are on then medications that are uh, enabling their transplant to, to, um, to be successful and, and those medications can have some impact on the, the, uh, their immune system and again, that may be something that they would like to discuss either with their transplant team or with the, with their CF team, but but again, as they know, their their ability to fight off uh, viral infections is still is still present. I'm sorry for my emails uh, making some noises as we've been going through this video, but I hope that has been helpful and 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 uh, reassuring. Um, again, there are, there is information on the CF Trust website and um, email or contact your CF team if you have any specific questions that, that, that um, uh, pertain to your, to your CF condition. Thank you.